one. Okay. So, hello, my name is Ruth and I'm going to be your PTE trainer for today. And this class is a free class offered by Seeker as a part of our other services. So we offer all these services along with free PTE, IELTS and NATI coaching. Uh, I'm going to be a PTE trainer for today and this class is conducted um, uh, through the Sydney branch of Seeker and the classes are from 11 o'clock to 1 o'clock Canberra time. So today we're going to look at PTE in a nutshell. So we're going to look at PTE as a nutshell as to what PTE is and how to go about it, how to attempt this test, how to achieve our desired score. We have yet another student with us. Uh, hi, Nivedita. My name is Ruth and um, welcome. Is this your first day? Hi, Ruth. Yes, this is my first day. I'm joining first time. Okay. And have you taken PTE before? Mm -hmm. No, I have taken IELTS before. Okay. I'll be taking PT for first time. So is this for your PR purpose? Yes. So you're looking at eight for each uh, for each module, I guess? Yes. Eight okay. Each. All right. And when do you plan to take your PTE by? Uh, by May or June. By the end of May or June. How, do you how did you find your IELTS uh, test? It was good. Great. I mean, I scored seven. I was aiming for nine, okay. but I ended up in seven. And I was advised by many of my friends that PT, you it will be easy for you to score in PT. Then that's now. right. So PTE mm -hmm. is uh, very easy to crack when compared to IELTS for majority of the students. The reason is because in PTE. So I'll just give you a brief introduction on on what's the difference between PTE and IELTS before we start. And I would also like to tell you that this class is recorded, and uh, because uh, the reason is some of our students do not have the chance to attend every day. So I'm re recording this class, but please treat this as an formal session and it's not being publicized uh, widely so don't worry about it I'm just letting you know that it's being recorded and ask me questions as we move on so wherever mm -hmm. you get stuck you want me to repeat you want me to go slow speed up let me know and I'll do that for you okay sure. all right so um What's the difference between PTE and IELTS? So there are um, uh, numerous English-based tests throughout PTE, the IELTS, TOEFL, and there are so many English-based tests, but the most popular is IELTS and the PTE test. What are the biggest difference between them? While IELTS was the popular test throughout, now PTE has also gained popularity. The biggest difference between them is IELTS has an, a, a human being or has an examiner who is a human who is sitting and he's checking your essays, who's marking your essays, who's listening to your speech and marking you. Whereas in a PTE, it's computer-based test. It's it's totally uh, marked by uh, by the artificial intelligence. So you need not appease a human being. You need not um, build a wrapper. Instead, you just you only it's it's a skill-based test. It's a talent-based test, and there is zero human intervention. So even the questions that is being prepared for your PTE is prepared by the AI. There is no human who is sitting and uh, preparing your questions for PTE. Okay, so yes. that's the biggest difference. The second biggest difference between the PTE and the IELTS test is PTE, there is a no, I mean, sorry, IELTS, there is no, nothing called transferable scores. Whereas in PTE, there is uh, transferable scores or there is a concept of transferable scores. Have you heard of score transferables before? No. So I'll give you a briefing. So this is our biggest advantage when you're undertaking the PTE test, your biggest advantage is the transfer of scores. So remember when you were taking your IELTS test, when you were doing your, maybe you were doing your listening section, you were doing your short answer question, imagine. So what are the skills that's being involved? You're taking your listening test. So you're listening to the audio, to the question or to the audio, to the recording and you're answering your question. So there are two skills that is used. Your listening skill is used and your writing skill is used. But do you get any points for writing? No, you no. get points. You get points only for listening because 
it, it, it looks only at your listening skill or you're attempting the question which is in the listening skill. But PTE has a big advantage when it comes to that. Even though a particular question belongs to a certain module, for example, you're taking up a speaking question which is belonging to the speaking module, but another skill is involved. You're also involving your listening skill or you're also involving your uh, reading skill then points are being transferred from this question to the other module as well, for which you use another skill. Am I being clear to you? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Okay. And Nivedita, am I clear to you? Yeah, you're clear. Okay, so guys, uh, please treat this as an informal session. It's just the three of us girls. If you've got any, any doubts, let me know. Okay, don't, don't worry about this being recorded. It's not publicized to, 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 to the whole world. Okay, it's just a small community. I just told it for your, um, just to let you know. Okay, so that's the biggest advantage. So I'll be telling you today on how to get our maximum points and what are the questions that's giving us points so uh, towards a particular module so that while practicing, for example, if I'm practicing reading, I don't get points only by doing reading questions after question after question, but I pay attention. I think as to what other question is giving me points to my reading. For me to get my 90 in reading, which other module will help me? And then I, I do my best for all that. And I try to gather maximum points towards my reading or my writing. Okay. So uh, have you heard of the free practice website? So all these websites, uh, RealPT, APUNA, these are all over the internet. Okay. These are your free practice websites. There is plenty of practice material. So this is a result oriented class okay and my only job is to see that you get your score so i'm only looking at it and that angle so this is not going to be like a lecture kind of a class instead it's going to be more of a practice kind of a class so these are your free practice websites real pte apune pt tools take a screenshot throughout the lesson feel free to take pictures write down notes download things don't worry about it so please take a picture of this make a profile please in all these websites there's plenty material so much that this is enough for you to get your uh, to practice for your PTE. You don't have to look outside. Okay, so this is all you need. There's more than enough. I, I don't think you'll even be able to complete all these resources before your test. There's plenty. Okay, and of this, the first and the second one, realpte and apuni.com, please pay special attention to both these websites because there's a huge chance that your questions for several modules tend to repeat or tend to appear from here. Okay, so pay extra attention here. Make a, make it, make a profile today itself and start the, practicing. Sorry, here. the first two, yeah? What's that, love? The, per yeah, first, the first two. two with, yes. Okay. So there's a big chance that your reading questions especially tend to come from these two sites, tend to appear. So I, I'm, I'm not predicting. The reason is I've seen so many of the real questions appear from these two websites. So they also give you predictions for this week. So they predict a few questions for this week. They give you monthly predictions, pretty useful thing and it's quite free. Uh, so uh, by, by talking so much about them, I'm even giving them a free advertisement. Uh, 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 <laughs> so, uh, okay. So after this, can I move on? Have you finished taking a note or a picture? Yeah, I did take a screenshot. Yes, I did. All right. So we'll start off with PTE speaking. Remember I just mentioned about transferable scores and how scores are being transferred from one side to another side. This module, PTE speaking, is the most important of all your four modules. The reason is PTE speaking gives you a huge amount of points towards reading and listening. So speaking of PTE supports reading, and it supports your listening module, okay? So this is called the backbone of PT, the most important of it all. You get your speaking done the best that you can, and you know, half your work is done. You've reached halfway to your desired score, all right? But PTE, a speaking is not supported by any other module. You get your speaking points only through speaking. So far, are we all clear? Yes, yes. All right. 
please give me a minute while I pull up another presentation. Give me a minute, please. Okay, um, sorry about the delay, I'm sharing my screen. Okay, I'm just sharing this PowerPoint, which I have made to just give you a brief description about PTE. This is because you're first timers. So um, all that you need to know about PTE, what are the question types and all that. This is a little bit about me. I am an engineer turned English teacher. So, okay. So this is your entire PTE. Your total PTE is for a duration of three hours. So two hours and 45 minutes is your PTE time. And you're tested for four modules. You're tested for your speaking, writing, reading, and listening. Remember in your IELTS, you only spoke about for 12 minutes to 15 minutes, whereas in PTE, you are supposed to speak for about 40 or 45 minutes, okay? So in, uh, in the IELTS test, PT, uh, the speaking was the least of your worries, or you didn't worry too much about your speaking, whereas in, uh, in PTE, PT, uh, speaking is your biggest um, or your most important question type. So part one of your PTE consists of two modules, speaking and writing. There is a distinction between them, even though they're considered as part one, they're distinct, they're separate, they're not two together, okay? So you start your PTE test with your speaking questions, with your speaking module, and that is for about 40 to 45 minutes, after which you will resume your, uh, your test with the writing module, which is for about 50 to 70 minutes long. And part two of your speaking, is uh, reading. So reading is for about 30 to 40, 32 to 40 minutes long. So it's an average of about 35 minutes. That's your reading um, time duration. Your part three of PTE consists of listening, which is also a very important module because listening supports reading and writing. So listening is very important. It supports writing, sorry, not reading. Listening supports writing to a big extent. So your biggest, biggest contributors or your make or break PTE module is our modules are speaking and listening. Are we clear so far? Yep. Okay. Yep. So we'll start off with speaking because it's the most important question type. So before we continue in speaking in, or in PTE, because we're dealing with an AI, it's very important as to how you speak rather than what you speak. So there is a technique you should remember or you should understand that your speech is converted into waves and it is matched or it is compared against a against a, a, a graph, against a reference graph. So your, your speech is converted into waves and the resultant graph is compared with the reference graph and based on the differences how you're being marked. So because you're totally dealing with AI, there is a specific way in which you should speak to get your maximum scores. So you don't get it uh, by being just a good speaker, but you get it by following the technique. So I'll tell you on how to speak, what are the techniques that you need to, uh, to adopt to speak and uh, what questions are important, what is not, okay? So this is all about speaking. Your total speaking time is for about 40 to 45 minutes. And there are five different question types of speaking. The first question type is called read aloud. So in this column, I'm talking to you about item. Item means the types of question or the question types. And here is your task description. So that'll show you as to how or what you're supposed to do in this task, what you expect it to do. And here, the number of questions that you will be getting in your test. I'll tell you the reason why I'm giving you this, but I want you to take a screenshot, write it down to whatever, but please take this information. And please pay attention to what I'm going to tell you, because this will give you um, pity in a, you know, speaking in a, in a nutshell. And it's important for you when you start preparing. And 
The first question is called read aloud. This is how you begin your speaking. In the IELTS test, when you're attempting your speaking or you're reading or you're listening, not all types of question come in every test, right? So sometimes some tests you might not even have diagram labeling. Sometimes you won't even have map labeling, but in PTE, every single question appears in every single test, okay, in the same order. The order also doesn't change. The types of question also doesn't change. The number of questions also remain almost the same. So it's very predictable. You know what comes after what comes after what, okay? And it's very important because there is no warning. There's no warning given to you. The question types just come one after the other after the other. Okay, it won't warn you. There won't be a heading telling the session is finished and the next session begins. So there's no warning. So the next question type pops up immediately. That's the reason why I give you the number of questions that appear so that you know, okay, after the fifth type of this question, the next question will start. So you're very guarded, you're very prepared. Okay, hmm. all right. So far, do we have any doubt? No. Okay, no. so, all right. So the first question type is called read aloud. This is a simple question type, but it's very important. So in this question type, what you're supposed to do is on your computer screen, there is going to be displayed a paragraph. So a paragraph is gonna be displayed on your computer screen and you will be given 40 seconds of preparation time. So you'll be having a paragraph and you will have 40 seconds of preparation time after which you hear a chime or you hear a beep sound. And then you're supposed to read this passage aloud. That's your job. Is this clear? Yeah. So this question type, it's very simple because we all know to read, but how to read is very important, which we will discuss as we move on. So this gives you about 30 to 34 points towards your reading. So this question type, which belongs to speaking, it transfers 30 to 34 points towards your reading module. Okay. So along with this supporting your speaking, it contributes points to reading. So your reading is also supported by this question type, which belongs to speaking. Okay. okay. The so second one- will be, Sorry, sorry yeah, to interrupt. No problem. So there will be six or seven paragraphs that we need to read one yes. after. Yes. So one after the other, you'll have six or seven paragraphs to read, after which the second question type just pops up. So you should be aware, you should be well prepared. So after your five read alouds, keep expecting the next question type to start at any moment because there's no warning. Okay. And you'll be caught unguarded if you're not quite prepared. Mm. The second question type is called repeat sentences. So if you want put a skull and two bones, because this is one of the most important question types in your entire PTE, okay? So please mark this as very important. This can make or break your PTE scores. Okay. Especially if you're looking at eight and seven, this is the most important question type and it's kind of tricky. Okay, there are only two tricky question types in your total PT, well, two or three, but this is one of the most important question type. So what happens in this question type? You will be listening to an audio. So as soon as you read aloud questions finish, suddenly there will be a recording or you'll be listening to an audio. So your listening skill is used, okay? So this question type, um, you'll be listening to an audio. This audio is going to be just one sentence long. And this sentence can be a small sentence, which is about eight words. It could be a medium sentence, which is about 10 to 12 words, or it could be a long sentence, which could consist of uh, about 12 to 14 words. Okay. So this is just gonna be one sentence long. Your job is to listen to the audio and quote back exactly what you've listened in three seconds. So there is no 40 seconds preparation time. There is no beep sound, okay? No prep time, no chime or no beep sound. And you'll have to repeat exactly what you have heard in three seconds. Okay, so the reason is uh, because you, it's, it's, it's using your listening skill, this question type can transfer 45 points 
to your listening. Okay. Any doubts so far? Um, no. There's no time to make a note of what we are listening. No, Swera. Uh, well, uh, I will come to it when we are discussing the strategy. So every question type has a strategy. I guarantee you, if you just follow the strategies and practice, like I tell you, your your points are with you. Okay, so your job is to be committed, attend regularly, practice, practice like a crazy person. Give yourself about four weeks and at least three hours of practice every day. Okay, and uh, your score is with you. So I'll tell you the strategy for this uh, um, after we complete it. Maybe we can just do the speaking in detail and I'll tell you all the strategies for it. So far, are we clear? Yeah, yeah. So you'll have about 10 to 12 questions for this, 10 to 12 questions. So there is no time for you to write the entire thing, but there is time for you to write, you know, the first letters of every word. Yeah. And all that, okay? The third question type, uh, okay, do you have any doubts, guys, before read aloud and repeat sentences? Just as an introduction. Hmm. Do you have any doubts? No. Okay, we no. move on to the, okay. We move on to the third question type, describe image. So by the time you finish your repeat sentences, you'll be a little bit tired because you're like worked up because there's no time. So when you come to describe image, you can relax a little bit because this is pretty easy question type, okay? So you'll have 10 or 12 of repeat sentences. As soon as you finish your repeat sentence, what happens is describe image starts. So on your screen, there will be an image that's being displayed. An image is displayed on your screen and you're given 25 seconds of preparation time. The image on your screen could be a bar graph, a line graph, a map, a pie chart. It could be um, a flow chart. It could be um, a cyclical process, a life cycle or something like that. It could be just a random image. It could be an image of a cup. It could be image of a phone. So you're just given an image on your screen and you're given 25 seconds of preparation time. After which you hear a beep sound or you hear a chime. And you're supposed to speak about that image for 40 seconds. So this question type is very important for your speaking. It does not give you points towards your uh, other module. It belongs solely to speaking. Okay, okay so um, I'll, I'll come to that. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you what's important there. So you'll have about six to seven of this. I know I have written six to seven, but in fact, you'll be having only five or six of this. Okay. Okay, is this clear? So for this, how you speak is important, not what you speak. So even though it doesn't mean you can talk about a movie story or something, but something related to that image has to be there, that's all. So all that they're caring for or all that is required of you or that, that is checked of you is, what they're checking for is if you can hold a topic, if you can speak about a topic for 40 seconds, that's what is being checked. Okay. Any doubts? It's easy peasy, easy peasy question type, and it can lift your speaking scores. This is where your speaking can get your 90. If you've seen students who get 90, 90 in speaking, this is the one that gives you your speaking points. So even though it's an easy question type, don't neglect it, okay? Get your fluency and all that done. I'll tell you um, as we move on. Okay, so the fourth question type that you will come across after your fifth or sixth describe image is called retail lecture. It's very similar to your describe image. So what happens here is an audio is going to be played. Suddenly an audio will start playing. It's going to be a lecture. And this lecture can be anywhere from about 50 seconds long to two minutes long, okay? So you'll be listening to a lecture. And after which there is a countdown from 10 to one, or in other words, there is 10 seconds of preparation time after the lecture. And then you'll be hearing a beep sound or you'll hear a chime and you have to speak about the lecture that you've just heard for 40 seconds. Any doubts? So this question type, because it's using your listening skills, gives you 
um, quite a bit of points towards listening, though not as much as repeat sentences. It can give you about 10 points per question towards your listening. Any doubts? No. Okay. The last question type in your speaking or the fifth question type is called answer short question. Please mark it as not important. So when I say not important, guys, I mean as you don't waste even a minute practicing this question because your time is precious and you have to focus on your important questions only to get your desired score. So mark this as not important. You may not practice that every day, but I'll tell you what happens and where it gives you points. Okay. Shall I continue? Yeah. Sure. Okay. So the fifth question type, it's called answer short question, not an important question type. Do not practice it. Okay. What happens here? You will be listening to an audio. The speaker is going to ask you a question. Uh, regarding uh, anything under the sun, anything that catches his fancy. So he might ask you a question like, um, what, and, and you'll have to give the answer in a word or two, in one or two words. So the uh, question he might ask you is, what do you call it when there's water falling from the sky? What do you call it? Sorry? So he might ask you a question which says, what do you call it when there's water falling from the sky? Rain. 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 He yeah. might also yes. He might also ask you a question which which is like this: What do you call an instrument that's used to measure the altitude of a mountain? I have no clue. You have no clue too, right? So he would ask you random questions like that. The answer is alt altimeter. I didn't know unless I checked for it. Okay, I didn't know the answer when I when I heard it first. So it could range from a very simple question, a stupid question like what is it when water falls from the sky to questions like this. So you will have to answer it in a word or two. But the reason why this is not an important question is it's not giving you points directly to your speaking or to your listening or to your writing or anywhere. It's just giving you points to another portion of your PT scoring, which is called enabling skills. So for that, you should understand your PT scorecard, right? It's divided into two. Have you seen a scorecard before? A PT scorecard? No. I can show you my scorecard. Um, but it, it okay. I'll, uh, so your PT scorecard is divided into two sections, two factors, two sections. The first portion is called enabling, I mean, sorry, it's called communicative skills. So speaking, writing, reading, and listening are the four modules that's involved in your communicative skills. That is where you need to look for your 8H. That is where you need your 7H. There is another portion or another part which is called enabling skills, okay? So you need not worry about that. No one is looking at 90, 90 or 80, 80 at that, okay? Your enabling skills constitute of fluency, pronunciation, grammar, written discourse, spellings, and vocabulary. So there is two parts to your PTA scorecard. Communicative skill, which you have to worry about, Enabling skills, which is just helping your communicative skills. So this question type gives you points to the vocab vocabulary in your enabling skills and doesn't directly contribute towards your communicative skills. That's the reason why you don't have to worry about this. Is this clear? Yeah. Any doubts? No. Can we uh, move on to speaking in detail and then we can do listening tomorrow and so on? Sure. All right, so uh, while I pull out the other, other um, thing, if you've got any doubts regarding your, uh, regarding what we just discussed or regarding PTE in general, feel free to ask, okay? Okay, can you see my screen? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So PTE speaking, there are five different question types. I will not elaborate as we just spoke about them. I'll just go into questions and detail and we'll practice all the questions for a while. Okay. All right. So speaking is one place where you actually need feedback. Feedback means you need somebody who will listen to you and tell you if you're right or wrong. If you have nobody, 
please listen to your own recording and try to see if you're following the technicalities or not. Don't ever speak and think you're doing a good job because you'll never know what mistakes you're making unless you listen to your own recording. Uh, can I suggest an app? Yeah. There's an yes. app called Elsa. For Elsa. Our... So can you uh, can you please um, um, type in the chat? Yes, please. So that I'll write it down. I can suggest it to my other students as well. So this is an app with artificial intelligence. Okay. And matches, like you said, for PT, it matches with your wavelength and gives you the score if it is right or not. Uh, okay. This app does the same thing. You have to register. Okay. It is free for some time, but you have to take the subscription. Okay. Uh, Nivedita, all the apps, right, that I just showed you, uh, all of it provides some kind of a scoring. P A P U N A P T. But the thing is, I'm not too sure about Elsa, so I won't comment. But on the other websites which I just showed you for practice, all of them give you an amount of scoring. They'll tell you your score. Please don't rely on that. The oh. reason is, uh, it's not as close as to your PT scores, your real scores. So, uh, okay. Before we continue, I'll share with you another thing. Um, so what I suggest is. I'm, I'm telling this from experience, okay? It's not from, I've been teaching PT for three years plus now. So what I always suggest or what I have done personally is before you take your test, um, maybe suppose you're taking a test um, next month, maybe about 15 days prior to your booked date, the date you've scheduled, please take a Pearson mock test, which is issued only by Pearson. So uh, have you heard of it? So yeah. this one. Yeah, yeah. So, but this is kind of expensive, but it's between you and Pearson. It's not something to do with me, okay? So Pearson mock test, what, they, what you can do is you can buy, it, it comes in a kit, maybe two or three tests. This is very similar. The scoring is very, very similar to your real exam. Okay. So what, what I suggest is before your test, take one test, you'll buy two, if you can buy two tests, one test, take it only for speaking. So that you see, okay, is my read aloud giving me enough points to my reading? So because read aloud can give me 30, 34 points to reading, I should be getting about 32 at least from my read aloud to my reading. And from my repeat sentence, I should be getting about uh, 40 plus points to my listening. If I see that I'm getting, or if you see, okay, my transferables are good enough. You're taking only speaking just to see if your transferables are good enough then you spend your 375 and you take your test test on the um, given date okay. otherwise you can reschedule your test for free now all right okay so that's that's very close so um uh, i'll if, if possible i can show it to you uh, show you my scores so when i took my pearson mock test and my uh, real pt the scores were very similar exactly the same so because you're spending 375 here this test costs you about 60 bucks i think 60 or 70 bucks but again you'll be saving your money you can always reschedule it to another time when your transferables are good and it also boosts up your confidence True. all right so um i'll show it to you on another day i have it with me but thing is i'll it'll seem like i'm showing off too much okay so i'll uh, show off i will not show off so before you start off your speaking there is a something called personal introduction this is not marked at all this is an unmarked area unmarked speaking so but this boosts up your confidence there is a portion for you to introduce yourself so or you can use this template which i'm displaying or you can take your own time so, uh, or, or you can speak in your own way. So you can say, my name is so-and-so, I'm from this part of the world, I'm taking my examination to, for my permanent residency or my further education for my employment. I like to do this and this and thank you. So after this, you will be starting off with your speaking. To get your speaking points, you earn it only through speaking. No other module can help you support your speaking. So speaking, is the only module which contributes points, but it does not receive support from other modules. Okay. We start off with read aloud. Read aloud is uh, very important for your reading. 
six, five to uh, six to seven questions or sometimes eight questions, it can give you 30 to 34 points to words reading. What happens in this read aloud? So if you can see my screen, this is a screenshot from a Pearson mock test. So what happens here is you will be given a passage or a paragraph like this. Usually these are going to be academic passages. So the words sometimes may not be too familiar to you because it might be from a different field of study. So they'll be giving you a reading passage and you'll have a timer like here. This is timing you a countdown from 40 seconds to one. And after which you'll hear a beep sound and you have to read this passage loudly. Okay. Now, guys, um, please pay attention because I'm giving you the strategy. And if possible, uh, try and follow the strategy as it is. This will really help you with your scores. What is, what is your strategy? What do you do in your prep time? There are three things that you should do in your preparation time. The first thing is in your 40 seconds of preparation time, read this passage loudly, read your passage aloud. So there are two things, you're getting familiar with the passage and you're also seeing if you're able to read it in the given time. So you read the passage aloud once. While you're reading, you plan your pauses. I'll tell you, I'll come to that. So you plan your pauses. Where are the places that you can pause? Because you're dealing with AI, you can't, you can't pause at every place. So you should pause at a full stop, which is given, uh, which is a given. And you can pause, if, you're, if your sentence is too big, then you pause at a comma or at a grammar word. I'll, I'll explain uh, that, but just mark it down. Three things to do. First thing in your 40 seconds preparation time, practice reading the passage aloud once. While you're reading, you plan your pauses or you think to yourself, okay, this is where I'm going to pause and breathe. And third thing that you can do is you plan your pronunciation. Okay. So these are the three things. Practice reading once, practice pronunciation and plan your pauses. Yeah. Now, Throughout your speaking, you are marked for three criteria or what, what are they checking in your speaking? When you're doing your speaking test, they're checking three criteria or they're looking for three things. The first thing is called, the first factor is called content. So you're marked for something called content. Hello, hi Komal. Hello. Komal? Hello. Hello. Hi, Komal. Okay. So you marked for three criteria or three things. So when you do your, throughout your reading, they are checking you for three factors. The first factor is called content. Content answers the question, what to speak. So when you're doing your read aloud, what to speak? What is the content of this? Every single word in this passage is your content. Suppose I ask you, what is the content of this cup? You'll tell me whatever is inside, this is the content. Similarly, every single word inside this passage is your content. Now in your speaking question, this content part of the question or what to speak part of the question is the one that is being transferred to the other module. Remember I told you that read aloud gives you points to reading. It comes from the word part of it or from the content part of it. Is this clear? Yeah. So if you can read the passage without adding to the content, we might have a tendency to add articles or um, another word. So if you can read without adding to the content, without replacing one word with another word, or an, and if we can read without skipping words in the content, you'll be getting a maximum of about three to five points per question towards your reading. Okay. Am I being clear to you guys? Bolo, am I clear? Yeah. Yeah, 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 sure. Uh, hi, Komal, can you hear me? Hello, Kuma. Uh, 
Um, can you hear me? All right. So I'll just tell you what we are going, what we are doing here. I understand that you're chat, you're chatting because um, um, it could be that you're uh, that you're not able to, uh, you're not in a situation to speak. I can understand that. So what I want you to understand is we're just giving an introduction. We had an introduction to PTE, so we discussed the speaking question type. We just had an introduction. So now we're looking at the marking criteria and the different question types and speaking in detail. Okay, so if you've got any doubts, you can always ask me and it would help you if you're interested to go back. So we will be putting this class in YouTube. So you can go to this channel, CECA Sydney. Just don't do CECA, you'll go to a singer's channel. So this is called CECA Sydney and you can, you know, take part, um, take note of the classes now or previously. Okay, coming back to the content. So content answers the question, what to speak? And all your speaking questions from read aloud to answer short question, you're checked for three factors, content, fluency, pronunciation. The content part of every question is transferred to the transferable module. Any doubts, guys? Am I clear now? So how do you get your maximum content point? Speak without adding, speak without replacing, speak without skipping or omitting words. Any doubts? No. All, All clear? clear? All good? Yeah. All right. So you should make note, especially you, Nivedita, because you're looking at a higher score. See that you get your maximum from here towards your reading. Awesome. The next factor that your speaking question depends on is called or are called, the other factors are called fluency and pronunciation. These two factors answer the question on how to speak. So your speaking question is divided into two parts, what to speak and how to speak. So how do you get your maximum fluency points or how are you going to get your maximum fluency points? For you to get your maximum fluency points, you get it if you speak without hesitation. So speak without hesitating, speak without repetition or without repeating yourself, speak without long pauses or speak without you know, a long pause. Spe your pause throughout your speaking has to be just three seconds long. It can't be more than three seconds. And you speak without false starts. So these are the four things not to do to get your maximum fluency points. So speak without hesitation, Hesitations mean, hesitation means uh, using filler sounds like um, er, uh, and all that. That's your hesitation. Speak without hesitation. Speak without repetition or without repeating yourself. Your radio, like the, 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 don't repeat yourself. Speak without long pauses. So throughout your speaking, you can pause at multiple places. Okay, but you can't pause for a duration longer than three seconds. If you pause for more than three seconds, what happens is you will not be recorded. Okay. So speak without long pauses. And lastly, speak without false starts. False starts means correcting yourself. Suppose you're reading, if you've made a mistake. You be like, uh oh, you can't go back and start over. Instead, you should pretend like you've never made a mistake and you continue to read. Okay. Can you please elaborate on false starts? So I'll just give you an example. Suppose I'm reading this, okay? And I'm telling a student exchange program complements formal education while promoting, instead of tolerance, I speak it as endurance. So I realize, okay, I made a mistake, but I don't go back, um, sorry, while promoting tolerance. Instead, I pretend like I don't make a mistake and I continue to read endurance, maturity, and independence. Okay. So in other words, you should always remember PTE 101. Do you know what is PTE 101? What's the biggest basic rule of PTE? No. Not heard of it? Never? Ever? Because I've never taken PTE. I've taken I was, miles. I was joking. So PTE 101 <laughs> is turn your brains off. Don't even think about what you're doing. Okay, It's all about strategy and technique, not about your language skills. Okay. So it's more about 
how you do things, how you're applying your strategy, how you're using your template rather than your language skills itself, okay? So I was just joking. So PT 101 is don't even think about what you're doing. All right. Okay. Then your next factor, okay. So four things not to do, right? To get your fluency points. Two things to do. So for you to get your maximum fluency points, then how should I speak? I should not speak like this. So how to speak? Please, 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 please. Mark this as your most important rule of your entire PT speaking. Speak with the same speed, okay? When we speak naturally, we tend to vary our speed, right? We speak fast, we speak slow, we speak in a normal pace, depending on uh, how passionate we are or how, what our mood is like. But in PT speaking, no. We st if you start at two kilometer per hour, till you finish, you finish at two kilometer per hour because you're dealing with artificial intelligence. Always remember your speech, sorry, is converted to waves. Second thing, speak in your flat tone or speak in a flattest tone possible. In other words, what I mean is do not intonate or do not enunciate. In other words, don't use your emotions. Suppose he's using, if you see a question mark, don't use the questioning tone. You see an exclamation mark, don't use your exclamation tone. Okay, that's how you get your maximum fluency points. Another thing to remember here is, Oh my God. Okay, another thing to remember here is don't pause it. Don't pause at every punctuation. Okay, so this is also one important thing to maintain your fluency. So where to pause? Where should I pause if I shouldn't be pausing at every punctuation? So when we were learning to read in school, what did we learn? We learned to pause at a comma, we learn to pause at a colon. We learn to pause at a semicolon. We learn to pause, use the exclamatory tone uh, when we see an exclamation mark. But in PTE, since we're turning our brain off, your only pausing point is a full stop. So you pause at a full stop. But sometimes what happens is your full stop is far away off and your sentence is uh, pretty long. So if you read it without stopping, and because we are not Shankar Mahadevan, we might tend to run out of breath. So what we do is we pause at a comma only in this situation. So see a comma which divides your sentence properly and you can pause at a comma only if your full stop is far away. Is this clear? Yeah. And finally, uh, you can pause if there is no comma, your sentence is too long, your full stop is far away. Then if there is no comma, then pause at a grammar word. So look at a conjunction or a preposition and you pause at a grammar, grammar word. So you pause at a grammar word like and or, or, or something like that, because, or something like that. Is this clear? Yep. Any doubts? No. So the maximum fluency points per question is five points per question. Thank you. Then the second thing that's important is your pronunciation. So as soon as we think of pronunciation, the first thing that comes to our mind is accent. So when I speak, you will know for sure that I'm from, can you guess? India. Because of the way I speak, the way I stress my words, the way I speak, it's very obvious that I come from India but accent doesn't matter in PTE. When you fill in your PTE form, you will know, they'll give you a, a leeway. They won't ask you just your nationality, they'll ask you what's your first language and they'll give you a leeway for your pronunciation, uh, for your accent. So don't worry about your accent, but pronunciation matters a lot. To instantly improve your pronunciation or to instantly sound clear, open up your mouth wider when you're speaking like I'm doing now, you might look a bit crazy, but you'll sound very, very clear on the mic, mic in, the, in the recording. Is this clear? Yeah. So the maximum points that you can get per question for your pronunciation is five. Okay. Okie doke. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to demonstrate one or two read alouds and I'll give you guys turns to 
do your read aloud. Is this clear? Yeah. Remember your strategy? Three things to do in your practice time. Friends, practice loudly. While you're practicing, so practice loudly one time. While practicing, plan your pauses. Tell yourself, this is where I'm going to pause. This is where I'm going to pause. First pause, second pause, third pause. You tell yourself where you're going to pause so that you plan it. And third thing, look at your difficult words after you read. Look at your difficult words and try and pronounce it. Okay, if you can't pronounce it well, then just call it something. Because speaking is depending only on what? Fluency pronunciation. So you tell something fluently, you tell uh, something properly with the correct pronunciation, you still get your maximum pronunciation point. Okay. So there will be a countdown from four, 40, right? When you reach four, take a deep breath in, breathe out and start reading. Okay. All right. So I'll just share my um, practice website with you. Dear, dear God, give me a minute. Hi, Imran. Is this your first time? Hello? Hi, Imran. My name is Ruth. Is this your first class? Mm, there's no one. No one? Oh, okay. Someone had just entered and... Okay. Can you see my screen? So this website is called realpt.com. So you need to make a profile and um, you'll have all the four modules here. And they also have something called prediction. Um, prediction. See, they've got weekly prediction. They've got something called question bank. Where's the mm -hmm. prediction? Where's the prediction? So you also have free mock tests here, which I don't vouch for, but if you really need a mock test, let me know. It's good to take a weekly mock test I can help you out with that. Okay, so where is the prediction? So you see there's a weekly prediction right here. So it says about 70% of the question come from the prediction file. So you can practice your predictions from here as well. So you've got all the four modules here. I'll click on speaking, read aloud. Okay, I'll just show you. 40 seconds preparation time. What I'm going to do is reading, practicing loudly. The term summary and abstract are often used interchangeably, resulting in some confusion. First pause. This problem arises because there are two distinct types of abstracts, descriptive and informative. Second pause. The informative abstract is sometimes called summary. The descriptive is not. This is the third pause. The descriptive, descriptive abstract is usually only two or three sentences in a length. My comma is the next pause. Hence, it's not a summary or very informative. So I plan my pauses at four. I breathe in, breathe out. The term summary and abstract are often used interchangeably, resulting in some confusion. This problem arises because there are two distinct types of abstract, descriptive and informative. The informative abstract is sometimes called summary. The descriptive is not. The descriptive abstract is usually only two or three sentences in length. Hence, it is not a summary or very informative. As soon as I finish speaking, I click finish. The reason is two reasons. First thing, I'm not supposed to pause for more than three seconds. Okay. Second thing is my neighbor would be shouting at the top of his or her voice. I don't want them to be recorded in my mic. Okay. So, so as soon thing is speaking thing is not timed, only preparation is timed. Oh no. You the maximum time that you'll be recorded for is about 40 seconds. Okay. So be careful with that. No, you speak at this pace, you'll be good enough. So two things that you can notice if you see this is the way my graph is looking like. It won't be too even because we are women and our voice is kind of a high pitch. If it's a man talking, it's be like even more smoother, okay? But don't worry, we are, we are marked based on our pitch, so don't worry about it. So if you can see, my pauses are very evenly paced. So I paused here, I've breath, breathed here, I breathe here. There's no break in my fluency. Mm. See, my fluency is maintained well and my speed is also perfect. So this is how, so you can listen to my recording. 
the term summary and abstract are often used. So you can always listen to your own recording while you're using it in this site. Okay. So what I did is I'll uh, give you another trick or hack or whatever you can call it. Use your finger or your pen uh, if you're not using a touch screen and drag it along the line. So place it on your screen under the line you're reading and then just drag it along the line. So that will help you to maintain that flat tone and that same speed. Okay. All right. Before we move on, um, how should you place your mic or where should your microphone be placed? So to your posture matters a lot. See that you sit as straight as possible. Otherwise, your breathing will be compromised. So first thing, your posture should be straight. When you place your mic, your uh, your headphone your mic is always on your left ear left side okay and it's parallel to your nose tip so if you measure it in your right hand with your right hand from this knuckle on parallel to your nose tip so not too close to your mouth otherwise your breath will be recorded or if you saw your yawn it will be all recorded so not too far away but it's parallel to your nose it's the perfect distance for you to speak properly Open up your mouth when you're speaking. Okay. Polor, any doubt? No. When, when you were speaking, it was so flat. So we have all the time we have to speak like that. Like, yes, like yes. A robot. Like a robot. Um, yeah, like a robot. So you're dead to all emotions. Okay, okay, one more thing. Don't understand the meaning of the words. Like I told you, if you understand the meaning of the word, your mind will be distracted. You'll be processing and you will slow down. Your speed will vary. And you will start using a tone. If this is something that you're not agreeing with, your tone will change. So you won't be flat. So the key is read without understanding what's the meaning. So in other words, everything opposite to whatever your teacher taught you while reading or while learning to read, that's it. Don't pause at any punctuations. Don't use your brain while reading. Read in your flattest tone. Don't change it because you're dealing with AI. Okay. All good? Yeah. Your techniques are the most important here. Okay. What I'm going to do is, do you want me to demonstrate one more or are you guys ready to read it? Ready to read it. Okay. I'll give you turns. So I'll start off with Nivedita. Nivedita, I'm going to display the next one. You know what to do in your 40 seconds. I'm going to keep quiet, okay? All over to you. At the count of three, one, two, three, and your turn. Deaf children learning a language could certainly pursue the development of listening and spoken language skills if desired. Because I'm um, doing so would carry much less risk knowing the child would have mastery in at least one language because if a child does not succeed in mastering either a spoken language or a sign language, we must then ask how much benefit the child derived from intervention in each language relative to amount of time and resources dedicated to those interventions. Deaf children learning a language could certainly pursue the development of listening and spoken language skills if desired, and doing so would carry much less risk knowing the child would have a mastery in at least one language. If a child does not succeed in mastering either a spoken language or a sign language, we must then ask how much benefit the child derived from intervention in each language relative to the amount of time and resources dedicated to those interventions. Okay, so it was nice and flat, um, but one thing was there was pauses for this sentence. You paused it a lot of places yeah, because it's a big sentence. So you yeah. planned your first pause over here. Yeah. And then you, di you did you stick to your plan or you went you paused at multiple places, I think. So in sentence like this, where the full stop is here and there's only one comma, you pause your first pause here, then we must then ask how much benefit the child derived from interventions in each language. Next pause. Mm -hmm. Relative to the amount of time and resources dedicated to those interventions. Next pause. So you plan it up to 10 words. When you're practicing, uh, oh. there is no pause, maybe 10 words, eight to 10 words, and then you can take a pause. Okay. 
Okay, and uh, one more thing. Uh, while uh, are you using your phone? Yeah. Okay, it could be that because the flat tone was not maintained. The reason is because the screen is small. Mm -hmm. uh, you might be struggling to read it. Mm, yes, maybe. Yeah. Could be. Or oh, next time, uh, when you when if you can, if it's okay, uh, if 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 everything goes smooth, can you can you use a laptop or when when you're practicing as well? That will help you to, uh, you know, use your finger and maintain that flattest tone. Do you want to listen to your recording? Uh, yeah, I want to know the score if I can. No point of the score. Um, there's no point. So you have to work on your fluency. Your pronunciation is great. Don't worry about it. You only need to work on your fluency. So avoid stopping in between and then maintain the flatter tone. So there's no point in knowing the, the score that these people give you. Absolutely no point. So this is only for, oh, they're asking for money now. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. All right. Can we do the next one? Are you ready to do another one? Yeah. Okay. Orientalists, like many other 19th century thinkers, conceive of humanity either in large collective term or in abstract generalities. Orientalists are neither interested in nor capable of discussing individual. Instead, uh, artificial entities predominate. Similarly, the age, or, uh, age old distinction between Europe and Asia or co coincident and orient herd. Orientalists, like many other 19th century thinkers, conceive of humanity either in large collective term or abstract generalities. Orientalists are neither interested in nor capable of discussing individual instead artificial entities predominate. Similarly, the age-old distinction between Europe and Asia or Occident and Orient heard beneath very wide label every possible variety of human polarity, reducing it in the process to one or two terminal collective realities. Okay. So here you had a bit of hesitation because the words were not familiar. You were not too familiar with your words. Yeah. So what you do is instead of uh, compensating on your fluency and pronunciation, because you are, you should focus on your speaking, you can't get it from anywhere else. Mm -hmm. So you simply call it something. So like this, okay. discussing individuals instead, artificial something, something. Similarly, the age old distinction between Europe and Asia or something and something hurts beneath very wide labels, every possible variety of human something. Okay. So you're not compromising on your fluency and pronunciation and you're still maintaining your, um, you know, the fluency. Okay. So we can use that word something and it doesn't affect the score. It will affect your content to some extent, not to a big extent, but it will. Uh, you will still be getting your complete speaking points. Okay. Remember, content is belonging to reading, not to speaking. Okay. Speaking has nothing to give or take to content. Your content is is to reading. Mm. Okay. Okay. So, Balor, are you ready? Yes. Okay. So here you go. Yet it is precisely in observing and in doings of success and fellow that chasing that flame makes its great mark. With piercing insight and the relentless logic, it drills, uh, sorry, <laughs> the pitfalls of international politics and uh, details and intricate struggle between individual and institution. It haunts us with the something truth that even a great man can do only so much to rethink the world. It's so bad. <laughs> it's okay. Yet it's precisely in observing the doings of success and valor that chasing the flame makes its great smart. With piercing inside the relentless logic, it reveals the pitfalls of international politics and details and intricate struggle between individuals and institutions. It haunts us with the Pregnant truth that they, even a great man can do also so much to reinvent the world. 
Okay. You have to work on your fluency. No stopping in between. Okay. Okay. Avoid, yeah. avoid stop, stop, stop in between. The more you practice, this will become second nature to you. So guys, yeah, sure. at least 30 every day. At least, please. Okay. So that, because you need to... 30 standards. Yeah, right. 30 questions. The reason is you're changing your entire style of speaking. You're speaking for PTE now. So you need mm -hmm. to uh, make that technique, adopt the technique to be your second nature. Mm -hmm. Okay, so 30 at least every day. Okay. So any doubts with your read aloud question? No. Can we move on to the other question types? Yes. We have four different types of questions left and we only have 40, 40 more minutes. Oh my God. Okay. Are you both, are you both taking care of kids? Not me. Yeah. <laughs> I get it. You know, I have a six-year-old as well. So I, I understand. I have two kids now and also I'm pregnant now. <laughs> Tell me about it. <laughs> okay. Okay, now is the time that you really need to focus because this is your crucial question type. This is the one where you where it makes or breaks your score okay many students many students lose just because of this question type just just this one question type so before i start this needs everyday practice and it needs you to practice a minimum a minimum of 60 questions six zero please 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 so if you want to take your test in the next four weeks if you're looking at seven plus eight plus then guys 60 six zero questions every single day i'll give you another resource as well suppose you're taking care of your children you're not able to sit in a place and use your website suppose you're driving or you have a long train journey whatever it is you know what you do to practice this question type I, i'll give it to you as uh, after i explain i'll give you another website but this needs all your time attention okay all right, so what is this question type? Like we know, we will be listening to an audio. The audio is played, the audio is gonna be just one sentence long. We'll be listening to an audio, which is one sentence long. No beep sound, no 40 seconds preparation time. You have to repeat it verbatim. So you have to quote back exactly what you have heard. Suppose you listen to an audio and the speaker says, go get me a drink of water. You you, in, in, the, in the first three seconds, you quote back exactly what you hear. Go get me a drink of water. You won't say glass of water, glass of H2O, but you quote back exactly, sorry, what you hear. It gives you 45 points to listening. Very, very, very important question type. Okay. So what are the strategies that you can use? Oh, before that, how is this thing marked? Give me a minute. I'm just grabbing a sheet of paper uh, just to show you how to practice this. So you'll be given in your test a laminated book, a book with laminated sheets. So the laminated book is going to have um, small squares, small boxes. So you, it's all marked book and you'll be given two marker pens or those thin sketch kind of pens to write. So you can write your notes and everything. Okay, before I forget, you will be needing your passport. So please pack your bags before you go. I know your girls, you can do it. If it's men, um, um, I have, uh, many of the students forget taking their passport and they come back without giving their test or taking their test. And second thing to remember is always make sure that your pen is right in because the ink dries up. Okay, so before you start your test, check your headphone. Even if you feel a slight disturbance, don't ignore it. Okay, don't think I'm just feeling it at all. It'll be fine. Call them, raise your hands up, raise a complaint, tell you want another headphone. Even if they tell you, even if they check and they tell you, this is okay, this headphone is fine, say no, I'm sorry, not comfortable, need another headphone, doesn't matter what they think, okay? That's one thing, don't compromise on your headphone unless you're very satisfied. Second thing, always cap your pens because 
the ink dries out really quickly. You'll end up not having ink and then you'll have to raise your hands again by the time they bring another pen, the question will keep moving. So always check two pens, both if they're writing, remember to put your caps on. Okay, that's because um, many many students that I've seen had, had, had this problem in their exam. Either it's headphones or it is the pens. Okay, so make sure of both these things. Okay, now how is this being marked or how is your repeat sentence being marked? The sentence that you're listening is going to be anywhere from an eight worded sentence to a 16 or 14 worded sentence. If you're able to quote back anywhere from, let me give, uh, give me a minute. If you can quote back anywhere from um, 75, percent to 100 percent of the content you'll be getting the maximum points which is three points towards your listening if you can quote anywhere from 25 percent to 50 percent you'll be getting a maximum of two points to your content and remember content always belongs to the transferable in this case it is listening and if you can transfer anywhere um, from uh, 25% to 50%, you'll be getting one point, which is transferred to your listening. Is this clear? Yeah. So you should be trying to get at least 75% of your sentence. Or in other words, if you ask me, if you're looking at a band eight, you should try and get at least 12 words to develop the skill of memorizing or grabbing 12 words from every sentence. So you're covering all the three factors and you'll always be getting three points. Okay. Okay. What are the strategies that you can use? Please take a picture of this. Okay, give me a minute. Uh, you don't have to worry too much about this. Okay, please don't worry much about this one. Doesn't work anyway, so don't worry about this. So this is also called chunking. Okay, what are the strategies or how should you remember or how, what can you do to remember? The first strategy or the first method is called initials method or it's called the initial letter strategy where you're listening to an audio. You're listening to go get me a drink of water. While the audio is being played, you write down the initial letter. You write down go get me a drink of water. So you write down the initial letter like this, go get me a drink of water. And after the recording, you say go get me a drink of water. So while you're reading, I know this might sound silly, but please remember while you're repeating, draw a line below it. Draw a line below it. Can, can you do that? So like this. So while you're repeating, right? Draw a line below it and repeat. Go get me a drink of water. This will help you. It's psychological, help you to stay focused and never ever forget a single word, okay? That's a very good strategy. Initial letter strategy. Write your initials while you're repeating. Please draw a line below it and repeat it. Okay. Second strategy is called initial letter and memory. It's a combination of initials and memory. What happens here is um, sometimes the sentence can be too long. So this go get me a drink of water is only seven words long. So you can quickly write your initial letters. But sometimes if the sentence is too big, if it has 12 words or 14 words, you won't have enough time to complete writing your initials. In that case, what you do is, for the first half of the sentence, you write your initials. And for the latter half, or for the next half of your sentence, you just keep it in your mind. Or you can do the other way around as well. Clear? This method, which I just told you, right? Initial and memory. 
that is what I've seen majority of the students use it, but you still need to know what works for you. So practice at least 10 to 12 using each strategy and fix your strategy. It's very important. The next strategy is called phrase by phrase. It's also called chunking or clustering. Okay, this is using only your memory. This one is the own, when you're using only your memory. Okay. How does this work? So you are listening to the speaker. Uh, first thing you have to do is you should understand what he's trying to say. So he says, go get me a drink of water. Understand the sentence to some extent. And the second thing is, pay attention to the teeny pauses that they'll take. They won't tell it as words. They won't tell it as go get me a drink of water. Instead, they would say, go get me a drink of water. So you see that they pause tiny bit at go get me. So you grab it in clusters or in chunks. You Instead of grabbing it as seven different words, you're grabbing it as two chunks or you're just pretending, you're tricking yourself into thinking it's just two words or three words if it's a bigger sentence instead of seven or 12 different words. Okay. That's your third strategy. That's the one that I follow usually. It works perfectly fine. But because it's your exam, what happens is you will not, you will might feel afraid because you're not having a backup. You're only relying on your memory. So that's why many students prefer this. Okay. The last uh, strategy is called speaking along with the speaker. So this needs a bit of an explanation. Stay with me. So speak along with the speaker. When I say 30, I mean 60. Um, okay. So speak along with the speaker. So what do you do here is, while the audio is played, turn your brain off in autopilot mode, mumble along with the speaker. So he says, or she says, go get me a drink of water. You're mumbling along with the audio, go get me a drink of water. And as the audio finishes, as the recording begins, you can repeat it just like that. So you wait till the recording uh, stops you mumble with the speaker or you speak along with the speaker, turning your brain off and then you repeat what you have heard after that. I uh, know I have written this is the best way. So many students who follow it vouch for it, okay? But don't worry about it. Try and see what works perfectly fine for you. You need to do at least 10 or 12 using each strategy to try and understand what your strategy is. So that's your homework for today or your goal for today that you figure out what is your go-to strategy for this. Clear? Yeah. Okie doke. Any doubts? No. So let's practice a few repeat sentences before we continue. Okay. Can you see my screen? Repeat sentences, okay. What we'll do is, what's the time? Time is 12.35. Uh, we'll practice at least uh, two questions using all the strategies. So firstly, we'll do initial letter for two, then we'll do initial letter and memory for two, then try and use only memory for three, uh, for two, and then speak along with the speaker. Can we try all the strategies? Yep. Okay. So I'm going to use initial letter. You also try and do initial letter and I'll show you how, how I've taken down notes. Okay, remember you have to underline while reading. Do you all have pens and papers with you? Or do you need time for that? Uh, I do have it. Uh, Bolor? Yes. Do you have your pen and paper with you? Yeah. Okay, ready? Yes. One. It's the half half. For me. What's that? That's the the hat. Hat. The office hat open. Yeah. It's a headache for you know many, many, many people. Okay. Are you ready? Yep. Okay. Uh, maybe just watch me for the first one so that you will know where to where the recording stops, where you should speak. Just watch, observe for one for one or two, and then we can do it together. Okay. Bye. Okay. So you're listening to the recording and um, okay, here you go. The Genetic Biology Technology Lab is located in the north wing of the library. 
the Genetic Biology Technological Lab is located in the north wing of the library. Okay, so you wait until the speaker finishes and then in the first three seconds, you started your recording. So I'll just show you my initial letter. Can you see my screen? Well, I think you can see it. Um, um, can you see it properly or can you see it just mirrored in a mirrored way? No, properly. T G B T L yeah. I L I N W O. Yeah. Yes. So you write your initial letter and you underline it when you're speaking. Okay. okay. So if you want, I'll just show you my recording. You can count the seconds. The Genetic Biology Technological Lab is located in the north wing of the library. Okay, so this is called initial letter strategy. Wait till the recording finishes. Breathe in, breathe out and start speaking. The reason is if you start too soon, a part of your content, the beginning of your content won't be recorded. Okay. So wait till the audio finishes, breathe in, breathe out and start speaking. Is this clear? Yeah. Okay, can we try um, initial letters together? Yeah. Okay, one, two, three and go. An extra lecture is about to be scheduled at the end of this week to assist you with revision. Yep, can anyone tell it? An extra lecture is about to begin by the end of this week. So we look at the answer. An extra lecture is about to be. Till here you've done, that's about 30%. Uh, okay. So the answer is an extra lecture is about to be scheduled at the end of the week for your revision, to assist you with your revision. So that, okay. So it needs a lot of practice. Now you know why I'm telling 60, right? It needs a lot. Okay. So while doing this, suppose you can't actually sit with your computer to work, right? And you are doing many things. You're uh, walking or you're driving or you're in the train. There is a channel called on YouTube, which is called uh, Career Coves. This is a YouTube channel. So on this, if you go to most repeated, repeat sentences. They give you the sentences that are repeated, that are most repeated for that particular month. So now we are in April, right? So you can go for April 2021 and they'll have questions for April 2021. So use this if you're driving or you're walking or you're working and you can't, so you just put your headphones on and you can practice it if you can't carry your, um, if you can't keep accessing the website. Okay, can we do an extra lecture is about okay, can we do a few or two more maybe and then we can go to the other question types. This needs a lot of practice for you to actually uh, do it. Okay, we'll just do one or two more, maybe just randomly something. The speaker mentioned two things that affect happiness. Something, two things that affect happiness. I didn't hear the first one. The, the speaker mentioned the two things that affect the happiness. Happiness, well done. So that's how we solve this question type. Any doubts with repeat sentences? No. Valor, only thing that it needs a lot of practice, right? Okay, sure. Okay, yeah. So let's go on to the other two question types that we have just seen. So the other question type, which, which is the next one, do you remember? Next question type is drawing, describe yes, image. That's right. So it's a describe image. It's your easy peasy question type, okay? Very easy one. So this gives you points only to speaking. So what does that mean? Your content is not very important, but your fluency and pronunciation is very, 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 very important. What to speak is not too important, but how to speak is very important. Ready? Okay, so take a picture of this if you do not have a template. So this is a template that you should rakta. You should memorize this. Take a pic picture, please. Done. 
Okay, Balor, have you taken a picture? Yeah, I'll go there. So this is a template that you use. The reason why, why is, it's very difficult to fluently describe uh, a picture as soon as you get it. It's, it's quite difficult. So what you do is you have this template in your head. So every image that you get, you use the same template. So you say, there is an image displayed in my screen. On my screen, I have about 40 seconds to describe this image. There must have been a popular debate about this image, whether it is true or false. However, the information given in the image appears to be true. From the image, I can see this, this, this. From the image, I can see this, this, and this. So you keep describing this image for about 40 seconds. Okay. Whatever you see. So you see numbers, you put in numbers. You see colors, you put colors. You see shapes, you put shapes. Whatever you see in groups of three. So the reason why I'm telling is, remember I showed you that graph, it has to have even pauses. You can't go up, down, you can't speak fast, slow. So you speak in the exact same way, like how I spoke. There is an image displayed on my screen. I have about 40 seconds to describe this image. There must have been a popular debate about this image, whether it is true or false. However, the information given in the image appears to be true. From the image, I can see black, white, and blue. From the image, I can see 10, 20, 30,000 people. So like that. Is this clear? Yeah. Okay. So guys, this is very important, not because it is hard, because it's easy and it gives you plenty points to speaking. So this is where you win your speaking, actually, because this is a very easy question type and it's easy for you to get your fluency points and in the same way it's easy for you not to get your maximum points as well so people who get 90 get it from such question types where only your speaking skill is described so the moment your enabling skill which is fluency reaches 70 76 78 if you get that much in your fluency it comes from these question type. Describe image and the next one, retail lecture. These are the ones that actually contribute towards your speaking itself, okay? Then speak calm, speak in your natural tone and a flat tone, okay? Don't worry about your making sense or not. Even complete nonsense is okay. That's what I was about to ask. <laughs> Doesn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't have to make sense at all. Okay. There's no need for it to make sense. So you're speaking complete nonsense. I know that as well. So uh, you should understand that you're only working for fluency and pronunciation. So how you speak is important. What you speak does not matter. Okay. What if you run out of content? Yeah, this is a very um, uh, um, common question. What if you run out of content? What if I've described everything and I still have time? Okay, I didn't tell you the most important thing. Remember, we are speaking for 40 seconds. We are supposed to speak for 40 seconds. Yep. Please see that you speak for an entire 40 seconds because they're looking at your speaking skills. In your read aloud, as soon as you finish reading, you click finish. Okay, there you're showing off your reading skills. You're telling, it doesn't matter what passage you give me, what word you give me, I can read it fluently, properly, and with the right um, uh, pronunciation. But in your describe image and read till lecture, you're showing off your speaking skills. So you're showing that you can hold a topic. You can talk about a topic for 40 seconds. So what if you, all your topic is, all your content is finished? You've told all the colors, you've told all the numbers, you've read everything, all your content is finished and you still have about 10 seconds left, repeat it. Go back and do the same thing over, doesn't matter. Okay, just don't stop in between. Don't pause, don't see that you speak for an entire 40 seconds. And so see, speak for about 36 seconds or so, about 80% of the time, I will show you how, how, how that works. And then you say to conclude the image gives to see, uh, carry. So you speak for about 35 seconds and then you conclude by telling over or to conclude the image carries a lot of information. Is this clear? Yeah. I'm just taking a picture so that I can demonstrate properly. Okay. Now, imagine I'm doing this, okay? I have 25 seconds of preparation time. Uh, and then after that, I hear a beep sound and I'm supposed to speak about this image. In my 25 seconds of preparation time, I make a note, okay? I make a plan. 
either if I have an image like this, like this bar graph, I have enough content here. I have numbers on the left side. I have this words. I have the names of countries. I have colors. I have ears. I have this title. So I have plenty of content. I do not need to write down a plan. But if I get an image like this, right? So here I have only right, wrong, green, red, keyboard and fingers. I don't have content. So what I do is in a random image like this with no words, no explanation, I draw two lines or I make three columns in my 25 seconds preparation time. So I draw two lines and I try and make three columns. Here what I do, I write down my keywords quickly. So whatever I'm going to speak about, okay, fingers, keyboard, white, right, wrong, method, type, red, green. So try to take down at least nine to 12 keywords. You won't have enough time. So try and take down at least nine to 12 keywords. Is this clear? And then you keep reading the same thing over and over as if you're chanting something. Okay. All right. Yeah. So always remember, every time you feel what a stupid thing I'm doing, always think of the end result. Always think of your eight band. Always think of your PR. You'll forget about using your brain. You'll automatically come back to send, uh, to, to PT. Okay. So I'll just show you uh, how to do this. So I would say, there is a picture, so there is an image displayed on my screen. I have about 40 seconds to describe this image. There must have been a popular debate about this image, whether it is true or false. However, the information given in the image appears to be true. From the image, I can see 0 to 4 million barrels. From the image, I can see 12, 14, 16 million barrels. From the image, I can see millions of barrels per day. From the image, I can see Iraq, Iraq, Kuwait. From the image, I can see oil production capacity. To conclude, the image seems to carry a lot of information. Laugh if you want to. I know it's the most stupid thing, but you'll get your speaking points like this. Okay. As long as the, we get the points. You will get it. You know, I use the exact, exact same template. There's no, all I'm speaking is not just blah, blah, blah. It's what I did to get my scores as well. So it's the same, exact same template, okay? And it works. The next one, uh, right, wrong, um, uh, or maybe I'll, I'll off the record, I'll, I'll just, oh uh, no. No, this is not for showing up. Okay, so for this image, if you're using this, I'll use the same template and I'll show you the image. There is an image displayed on my screen. I have about 40 seconds to describe this image. There must have been a popular debate if this information in the image is true or false. However, the information in the image appears to be true. From the image, I can see fingers, keyboard, white. From the image, I can see right, wrong method. From the image, I can see type, red and green. From the image, I can see fingers, keyboard and keys. From the image, I can see fingers, keyboard and white. From the image, I can see right, wrong and method. To conclude, this image carries a lot of information. Okay. So you can also repeat whatever you wrote yes. in that uh, yes. checkerboard. Yes, it does not matter. You, you can repeat it. Only thing is you see that your fluency is kept same. So that's why it's strictly three, three, three keywords. Oh, okay. So same song, just change your lyrics as you change your, as the image changes, that's all. Okay, okay uh, uh, the second, so it works for every every image, same thing, same story. The next question type, whatever I spoke to you, right? Exactly the same. This question type is also similar, exactly the same. But there you saw an image and here you'll be listening to an audio. Okay, so I'll just describe this question type for you. What happens in this retail lecture? It's an easy question type. As soon as someone says retail lecture, in your book, draw two lines or make three columns. Here, while you're listening, to an audio is played. This audio is going to be from 50 seconds to about two minutes long. So what you do is you write down 30 keywords, three zero. 
from the audio that you're listening to. Write it neatly because you're going to read it fluently later. So if you write it in a, in a bad writing, if you're not able to read it later, you'll, you'll hesitate. So it'll cut your fluency. So see that you write it neatly. You can use your short forms. You can use your SMS language. You can even draw if you want to, but see that you can understand it when you're reading it. And you'll read it exactly how you read it in groups of three. Okay. So you'll be listening to the lecture. The key words when I say, take words that are nouns, okay, and verbs. Take dates. If you listen to any dates, take them. That's important. If you see percentages, take it. Any information, data, all those are quite important for your retail lecture. In other words, anything other than your grammar word, um, like and, but, because, whether, wherefore, don't take all your grammar, grammar words. Anything other than that is good enough for your retail lecture. And you read it exactly the same. So I'll show you the template for retail lecture. Take a picture, please. So here also, you'll be speaking for about 35, 36 seconds. And then overall, the lecture was very informative. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'll take you back to P real PTE website. I'll play an audio and I want you guys to try and take uh, keywords, 30 keywords, and I'll show you how to read it and then you practice it at home. Clear? Yep. Can you see my screen? Yes. Okay. All right, so oh, I did this a lot of times. Maybe the brain is. Okay, ready? Suits, which comes. Ready? Yeah. Okay. One, two, three, and start. Soot, which comes from combustion of many different things, is black, so it's a strong absorber. In fact, it's second only to C Oxo in terms of warming. So it's actually ahead of methane, which you hear a lot about. The interesting thing about soot and aerosols impacts on climate is that their lifetimes are so much shorter. So if we can reduce the soot, we can make changes within months versus tens of years. It's not to say we should ignore the sea octo and the greenhouse gases, but it could buy us some time while we actually do the right strategies to reduce the greenhouse gases. The lecture was about suit. The speaker talks about suit, combustion, different things. The speaker talks about second only to other sources. The speaker talks about warming, methane, and other gases. The speaker talks about impacts the climate faster. The speaker also talks about should not ignore the effects. The speaker then talks about greenhouse gases. The speaker then talks about strategies to reduce the gases. The speaker talks about greenhouse gases reduction. The speaker talks about suit second impacts. The speaker talks about should not ignore the effects. Overall, this lecture was very informative. Is this clear? So we yeah. don't get the time. I mean, there's no time. It we have to manage the time. Yes, you have to manage the time. So one more thing that you should understand is uh, sometimes you'll have three or four of these questions of these. Two will be um, medium sized. So the lectures will be nice and long. You can write down 30 keywords, but one lecture definitely is going to be a very small one like this one. Okay. So you won't have enough time to take your 30 keywords, but try to take it at least 20 and then repeat your content. Okay, okay. so um, that's our uh, four question types, but it's, it, it doesn't matter how many classes you listen to. All that matters is you practice as much as you can. Okay, and then we'll go into the fifth question type. Before that, uh, because we only am I'm supposed to end it in, in about three, four minutes. So I'll just put my email address here. If you've got any doubts, okay, or you need my help regarding anything, please let me know. 
So I'll just show you how the answer short questions look like. Answer short question is the fifth short question. So here the speaker is going to ask you a simple question. Don't practice it at home. Okay. What is the area of the lowland between hills or mountains? Valley. So the question was, what is the area of the lowland between hills or mountains? And the answer was valley. So sometimes we know, sometimes we don't. Mm. What is the legal document that sets out how the people want their property and possessions, their estate, divided after their death? Can you guess? I think it's a will where people divide their estates after their death, they said. A will or a testament. So don't practice this at home because this is like a lottery question. You never know what he's going to ask you. There is no point wasting your time. It doesn't give you any points to speaking, writing, reading, listening anyway. Okay, that's all, uh, girls. That brings us to the end of our lesson today. Um, was this lesson helpful for you? Yeah, very helpful. So will you be attending classes tomorrow as well? Yes. Okay, tomorrow yeah. we'll be listening or writing then. Sure. Okay. okay, so let me know if you've got any doubts. And if you keep regularly attending classes, you know what? We can make it like a study plan. I'll make a study plan fixing four weeks and then you can sit for your test. We can make a study plan and we can stick to it. So I'll give you mock tests in between. I mean, you can attend mock tests in between. I'll give you my feedback and we can do it like that. Um, so uh, all right, then I'll see you again tomorrow. It was a pleasure meeting you both. Have a, have a Thank great day. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you so much. Thank you. Have a great day. Bye. Good day. Bye.